us here in 15 minutes. But Jason Shear, Wildcat Authority. Jason, are we on the doorstep of what's about to happen with Arizona? And will it include Arizona State? Yeah, we are, uh, we're about as close as you can get. Now, things can always fall apart. I always preface this by saying you never know with the realignment. Um, but tonight's the night. I, I think that the major step gets taken of going to the border region, saying what you're going to do, and, uh, and kind of planning how you're going to roll it out. The message and the discussion will, will all take place tonight. So how quickly did Arizona State pivot to – we need a new plan after they saw that TV deal. Uh, you know, it, it was not right away, which is, which is pretty crazy. Um, the school president basically had an epiphany on, on Tuesday night. The people around him were saying it was not a good deal. It's not a good deal. Tuesday night is when he started to have second thoughts. And then from there, yesterday, from what I understand, it was a full on, okay, we need to join the Big 12. And they had a conversation, uh, a lengthy conversation with Yormark and his team on the phone yesterday. Um, and it kind of had an awakening that this is pretty much the only move uh, that they can make right now. Wasn't you, th if you look at the teams that look like they might be in order with Colorado and Arizona, let's say them one and one A, one A, one A, one A, one B. How difficult would this have been? Because wasn't Crow like, dug his heels in that they weren't leaving? Yeah, I mean, Crow has been one of the biggest Pac-12 supporters. This guy was, like, close with Larry Scott to the bitter end. Like, when everybody knew that Larry Scott wasn't good enough, uh, Crow was right by his side, basically defending him. And he is a, a Pac-12 guy. He does not value athletics as much as, you know, Robbins does, for instance, at Arizona. Um, there's other presidents like Crow, but he, he doesn't value athletics as much as some of the other guys. And he was pretty dug in. I mean, I, I honestly think that there was a point where ASU would have been willing to accept a bad deal just to stay in the Pac-12 and, and keep the conference together. The the thing that just became obvious was that it, it was a not a good deal at all and that the brand of ASU would be hurt by the lack of visibility. And then you have Oregon and Washington who are looking out for their own interests and uh, it became obvious that ASU had to do what's best for ASU. Jason, what about the report? Brett McMurphy was just on with us about that Apple had given the Pac-12 until the end of this week on the media deal. They didn't get the final numbers or whatever it was until Tuesday. Now, maybe some knew, knew it, but is that just like a summary or an example of how this has been so much a cluster blank? Yeah, I mean, look, this is how Apple works. I mean, and, and I said this, it, you know, Apple was – deep in negotiations with the NFL and then basically just got up and, and walked away. I mean, from the NFL, <laughs> like, so, uh, you know, this is the PAC 12. It is very believable that they said, look, we made our offer. You're either going to take it and you, or leave it. And if you leave it, we're going to go look elsewhere. And now with the big 10, you got to wonder, like, I wonder if Apple would even accept the deal today because they might say to themselves, you know what, let's get in and try to maybe get some of this big 10 action because they're going to need, another outlet because of the amount of teams that they have maybe we'll make a run at that and, and so uh, it is very believable um that apple gave a deadline it'll very clearly not be met and it, it you know if it's not met and the pac-12 went back to you know let's say that the realignment wasn't happening and the pac-12 went back to apple next week uh you know i it is not a guarantee that apple would even listen this is just how they deal they're notoriously difficult to deal with and it, it's kind of their way or nothing, and they want it all, and they want the things on their terms, and um, it's an indication of kind of how strung, I don't want to say strung along, but the Pac-12 basically has very little say in the future of their conference. Robbins was on record as trying to, you know, hoping like everybody was, that it would work out for the Pac-12, but we need to see the numbers, we need to see the numbers, and he was very adamant about streaming not being the majority of it. Uh, is there anything else that may have even made this an easier decision for him? Yeah, from what, from what I was told by a, a very good source, the money wasn't awful. Uh, it was the visibility. You know, the, the visibility, and the, it's not saying the money was good. You know, maybe Robin considers it if you're getting $30 million a year, you know, and the incentives are realistic. Maybe he considers that, but 
he has been adamant. I mean, he is on record of saying even 50% streaming would be too much. And so, you know, maybe if the money total was higher, he would, he would have gone back on that a little bit. But for $24 million and mostly streaming, there was no way that Robin uh, was going to agree to it on his own terms. So, Jason, do you do you expect this meeting to be pretty quick like the Colorado meeting, or do you think that it'll drag out a little bit tonight? I think it'll drag out a little bit. Uh, I, I think that, you know, it's scheduled to go, it's scheduled to go an hour and a half. Uh, I hope it doesn't go an hour and a half because that's going to be a very long hour and a half. Um, but I, you know, I, I think they're going to, the Arizona border regions is going to hear from both school presidents. Um, it's a different situation. Colorado was just Colorado. You know, this is and in the Arizona border region, they overlook ASU, Arizona and NAU. And so even though NAU isn't involved in this, they, they have to listen. Um, there's a whole hierarchy. I mean, there, it is, it is a kind of a complicated board. Um, it's not the most powerful board necessarily, but it, it, it's got certain layers to it. So I, I think what we'll, what we'll see tonight is, is a long meeting where they explain the reasoning. And the biggest thing is, um, you know, they they want to make sure this is unanimous. They want to make sure, you know, even if it's not unanimous, it appears unanimous and they want to get the messaging straight and all that. So if someone disagrees or, you know, cause even, you know, when Colorado had their board meeting to explain it, one of the, the board members straight up said, I'm not a big fan of this, group, but I'm still voting. Yes. And, and so they want to make sure that it's unanimous and all the board members are, are, you know, okay. And, and have the right messaging and all that. What would it take for everything to put the brakes on this, would it be a political thing? Is there any way you think tonight? And I know you, and, and you're right. You never know with realignment. Is there anything that could put the brakes on this for one or both of these universities? The only thing I think that would stop this process is if Michael Crow goes back to where he was 72 hours ago and gets cold feet. And look, is it possible? You know, is, is it likely? No. Is it possible? Absolutely. Um, I would be surprised, but, you know, Michael Crow would, might say to everyone, you know what, never mind. Uh, I'm not doing this. Now, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I believe, you know, based on what I've heard, that they have a verbal agreement with the Big 12. Um, but that would be the thing that would hold up this entire process. It won't come from Arizona. It, it'll, come from Ari- it'll come from Arizona State or maybe if Utah puts a wrench into things somehow. But Arizona's all in right now. So has Crow... Has Robbins, in your opinion, have they talked to your mark in the last few hours or at least from yesterday evening to now? Uh, yes. I, I know that ASU has. Um, Arizona might have just already been in. I know that Arizona met with your mark in the past 48 hours. Uh, yesterday is such a blur, but I, be- <laughs> I believe it was <laughs> Tuesday that Arizona met with your mark. And I know that, um, I don't know if it was in person, but I know that your mark and ASU spoke at length yesterday uh, i don't know if there's been any contact today um but i know that that there's been a, a significant amount of contact um since monday night in that pac 12 meeting jason this is uh this has kind of been building and you have been in front of it you have not fallen for a lot of the sources or the narrative and obviously i know you've discussed this and you've put out receipts about those who threw grenades in your backyard but um again until it's official it's not official but your thoughts about uh, you've grinded through this, young man. You really have. And, and you kind of were on an island for a long, long time. And is it interesting, kind of almost uh, not emotional because you can't get that way, but maybe you can, that it's this close because for so long, for almost a year, people thought you were not very good at what you did. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's funny because yesterday was my birthday. And oh. <laughs> I had been home. No I'd been home working. I'd been home working all day, and my wife finally said, "You know, we're we're going to dinner." And I get in the car, and I'm completely serious. Within five minutes, the the Arizona Border Regents post their meeting, and <laughs> my wife goes, wow. "Well, I guess this is it." And we're at a red light, and I just shook my head. I was like, "You know," and she's like, "What's up?" And I was like, "You know, it's it's like it's very similar to coaching searches. It takes a lot out of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, re- reporting and following this stuff. I mean, it is a twenty four seven phone by your head type of deal. And I have two kids starting school next week and it, it's a lot. And so for it to finally be coming to a close, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it's nice. And then a lot of people, you guys especially have been super nice about the whole process. And um, I can't thank you guys enough. And really anyone that, you know, I started this, as, you know, a lot of people, big 12 fans didn't know of me very well, obviously. Um, but everyone's been super kind and it's been, uh, it's been 
a, a lot of fun to cover, and it's kind of nice seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel now. All right, so the meeting's tonight, hour and a half, seven hours, whatever they decide to do. Will they release anything tonight? There will be a leak, I'm sure, but when will we know? Will it be tomorrow, or how does that work? I was told the goal is to have everything rolled out tomorrow. Um, I, you know, again, you never know with bureaucracy and all that, but I, I was told two to yesterday, actually, that the goal was Friday to have everything announced and the big 12 want to announce multiple schools at once. Uh, I don't know that that could include Utah. I I'm not sure Utah may be next week. There's rumors of a Utah board meeting that could take place as soon as tonight. Uh, but I do believe that we will hear an, an announcement from the Arizona schools tomorrow. Jason, thank you. Everyone in the chat, by the way, uh, recognizing the, the work you put into it. It's not done because you never know. There is Hail Marys, uh, and, uh, and maybe there's still one or two of them out there. But thanks for your time. Good luck with it covering the night. We'll be in touch, and have a great night. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You too. Jason Shear, 247wildcatauthority.com. You know, I never heard of him.